What's going on guys, Kades here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you the top 3 very fast leveling builds in New World. So all these builds are meant for super fast and high damage mob farming, leveling to up to level 60, then even high tier expeditions or elite farming and much more. So then like per usual for each and every single build I will explain what attributes and perks you want to have then what gems and specific gear you want to use for each weight category so you could get 100% the best stats out of your build and lastly I will show you the best gameplay of me using different weapons so you would know which abilities you want to use first on the mobs and much more and just a quick disclaimer that bunch of these builds have been updated because of the new bugs that new world developers implemented so that's why we have few changes for each build so then, moving over to the first build, which is the one and only Fire Staff and Ice Gauntlet. And these are the attributes you want to have. So first things first, no matter from which level you start using this build, you first of all want to get your intelligence to 150, or even 200, and then start building your constitution. And around level 60, you should have 300 intelligence and 100 constitution. And last but not the least, for your gear you want to go with the light category. And the best setup is to use medium chest piece and then the rest light armor. And this will put you at 12.7 kilograms, which is the closest possible weight just below the medium category. And just to quickly explain my reasoning behind going for light armor. So right now, in the current stage of the game, I believe that for mage class, the best setup is medium gear for PvP and wars. But specifically for PvE and leveling, you want to do as much damage as you can. And having the added damage percentage and two dodge rolls is very useful. For farming bunch of mobs and just in general escaping big boss attacks. So that's the only reason why we still want to use the light armor. But like I said, for PvP and endgame content, I recommend to use medium armor for the specific build, but I have covered all of that already in the previous video. So then moving over to the first weapon, which is the Fire Staff. And these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all you want to unlock both these two perks and then the first ability called Fireball. And then get these three next perks. Then afterwards unlock the second ability called the Pillar of Fire and then the next perk to that as well. And now let's take a closer look at the other side and unlock all these three perks. Then lastly unlock the last third ability called the Burnout and then get these two perks. And now from this point you feel free to pick and choose which perks you want to unlock next. And just to quickly explain myself, we picked these specific perks for as much damage as we could get. So yeah, sure, we missed out on one or two perks that could give us more mana, but for leveling, in my opinion, you want to kill mobs as fast as you can. So this build will require for you to use mana potions, but they are super cheap. So for example, on my server, you can buy tier 1 or tier 2 mana potions for like 0.05 gold. So for sure, feel free to buy or craft a bunch of potions before leveling. Okay, and now let's move over to the second weapon, which is the Ice Gauntlet. And and these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all you want to unlock all these three perks and then the first ability called the Ice Storm and then get these two perks. And we specifically only pick these two perks because of the third one is bugged. And if you select it then every time you use the Ice Storm ability and right away switch to the weapon the ability will disappear. So either way wait and don't spend one point or just spend it but every time you use the Ice Storm just don't switch your weapons till the Ice Storm ability runs out by itself. So then from here now let's move over to the other side and unlock this one perk. And then the second ability called the Ice Shower. And then unlock the next perk to him as well. And lastly unlock the last third ability with the next perk. And now from this point you'll feel free to use your points in whatever order you like. Ok so now let's go over to the gameplay where I will show you the best way to play this build. So first of all we have the fire staff and the Q spell aka the burnout is a big dash spell which you can use for mobility or if you hit enemies while dashing they will take extra burn damage. Then the R ability is called the pillar of fire. I usually use it only on groups of mobs and never against just a single target because it will deal decent damage but you have to stand still for a second while casting the spell and by doing that you become an easy target. So basically only use the spell against multiple targets and lastly we have the F ability called the fireball which is very powerful damage spell and as it is an AoE spell you don't have to hit directly an enemy you can just aim it at the ground where the target is standing on and it will damage him as well and even if you're fighting against mobs that are flying or moving 24 7 if you try to hit directly the enemy with the fireball the damage spell sometimes doesn't work or even the fireball itself can go through the enemy so remember to always use it on the ground so now let's move over to the second weapon which is the ice gauntlet 
and your Q spell is called the Ice Storm, which all enemies standing in it will get damaged and slowed. And the more enemies you hit, the higher damage you will get. Then your R ability is called the Ice Shower, which when using will create an ice wall, and if mobs go through it, it will stun them. And lastly, our last third ability is basically like an ice block, which by using, you put yourself in a block where you cannot take any damage. And of course, you can go out of that ice block by pressing the same F key, or instead press the left mouse button and make it explode, and do even more damage to the enemies. So, as far as your ability combinations go for the ice gauntlet when farming mobs or even players, the best spell combination to do is place the ice storm aka the Q ability on the ground, and then go ice block by pressing the F key, and players or mobs standing in the storm will be taking a lot of damage every second and you will be fully protected in the ice block. Then of course, place the ice shower aka the R ability whenever you want to stun an enemy or run away from him, and this will create a wall which the enemy cannot go through. And then as far as your fire stuff abilities go, use the fireball and pillar of fire on grouped up enemies. And to reset mobs or do even more AV damage, use the burnout ability and dash through them. And just a simple reminder, if you ever get low health or in a trouble, then climb up on top of a box or an object. And this will make the mobs not being able to attack you, and after a few seconds, seconds, they will reset. And with all this said, now let's go over my final conclusions for this build. This fire staff and ice gauntlet weapon combination right now is by far the best DPS slash highest damage build that you could have in your world and you can use it even for PvP as well. But of course, just remember to buy a bunch of mana potions so you could keep on using your abilities 24-7. And then of course, last but not the least, for the Ice Gauntlet, you want to use the Malachite Gem. Then for your Fire Staff, get the Diamond Gem. And then for your gear, amulets, rings and everything else, use the Enix Gems, and that's about it. And to get the most out of your weapons and gems, when placing the Ice Shower, keep on using the Ice Gauntlet and mobs standing in the storm will be slowed, which will activate the Malachite Gem and give you 12% more damage. Then always, before ever getting hit by a mob, use your Fire Staff and activate all of your spells. And if you do this before taking any damage, you will activate the diamond gem, which will give you 15% more damage as long as your health is at full. So, if you're looking for the best and highest damage build for a mage class, then these are the weapons for you, so have fun! So then, moving over to the second build, which is the Great Axe and Warhammer. And these are the attributes you want to have. So then again, no matter from which level you start using this build, you first of all want to get your strength to 100, or even 150, and then start building your constitution. And around level 60, you should have 200 strength and 200 constitution. And then last, but certainly none the least, for your armor, you want to be in the heavy category, which means using all the heavy equipment plus a shield on your back, if you want to get as many cool things as you can but it's not required and will not give you any extra stats. And then as well, we could go for even 300 strength and use a medium or light armor to get as much damage as possible, but we already covered that in the previous video. So if you're interested in that, then check it out. But for faster leveling, sure, more damage will give you quicker times for completing quests or killing mobs, but you will have to be careful and try to dodge or block the enemy attacks. And by going full tank build, which we are using in this video, so to say, we can easily turn our brain off and just stand in AoE attacks and almost take no damage whatsoever. So, this is your own personal preference. What you'd like better for leveling? Go full tank and don't bother with mobs or go medium or light armor and try to play as careful as you can. So, with that out of the way, then for our first weapon we have the Great Axe and these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all, you want to unlock the first ability called the Reap, and then get these two perks. Then afterwards, unlock the second ability called the Charge, and then get these two perks. Then from this point, now let's move over to the other side and unlock all these three perks. Then lastly, unlock the last third ability called the Gravity Well, and then get these three perks. And now from this point, you're for free to pick and choose which perks you want to unlock next. Okay, and now let's move over to the second weapon, which is the Warhammer. And these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all, you want to unlock the first ability called the Clear Out, and then get these two perks. Then afterwards, unlock the second ability called the Shockwave, and then get these two perks. And lastly, unlock the last third ability called the Path of Destiny, and then get these two perks. And now from this point, let's take a closer look at the left side, and unlock all these three perks, and that's it. Now again, you can spin your points in whatever order you like. So then, let's move over to the gameplay, where I will show you the best way to play this tank build, and how to get out of your abilities the best possible results. So first things first, for your Great Axe Q ability, we have the Gravity Well, which you can just aim and shoot. And if you hit a target in that electric storm, he will take damage and get stunned. Then the second ability is called the Reap. 
which basically extends your axe for 5 meters. And if an enemy or mob is running away or casting his spells, you can pull him back or interrupt his ability. And lastly, we have the F ability called the Charge. And this is another dash ability, which will deal damage and give you more mobility. And now let's go straight into the Warhammer, and the first Q spell is called the Clear Out. And it is a wide swing, that knocks back all targets in 4 meter range. Then our R ability is called the Shockwave. And when using the spell, it will give us the ability to slam down the hammer and create a small earthquake. And all players standing in it will get stunned for 2 seconds. And lastly, we have the F ability called the Path of Destiny, which creates a huge electric wave. And all enemies standing in this path will take a bunch of damage. So, the way you want to level or farm mobs, first of all, try to pull as many as you can. And as you are a tank, you can easily pull even 10 or 20 mobs. And then when you find a good spot, use the gravity well and then switch to the Warhammer. And use all of your 3 abilities, in no matter which order. Your main objective is to pull and find mobs with great axe and then stun the enemy with the gravity well. And then switch weapons and do all of the AoE damage with the Warhammer and that's it. As well, I usually prefer to save the charge ability on the great axe for movement speed, so I can get away from the mobs. But if you need a bit more damage, feel free to use the reap and charge ability. But like I said, I like to save them just in case. So now for my last and final conclusions for this build. This great axe and warhammer weapon combination right now is super strong. And as you're using a heavy armor, you can still survive for very long, but at the same time, deal a bunch of damage. So then, last but not the least, for your Warhammer and Great Axe for leveling and mob farming, use the Opal Gem. And specifically for PvE, meaning expeditions and just in general, group content, use the Carnelian Gem. And then for all of your gear, get the Enix Gems. So, most of the time, you want to use the Opal Gems, and they give you 15% damage every single second, when your stamina is not at 100%. So, use it at your advantage, and keep on using your dodge to get the increased damage and then lastly if you ever want to be a tank in expeditions or just in general if you just find a group and you want to be the tank roll then use the carnelian gem and they will give you a 300% increased threat level on mobs so they will only attack you and not your teammates so if you were looking for a tank build that does still a lot of damage and can survive then there's the build for you so enjoy So then, going over to the last and final build, which is the best healer build. And for the weapons, you want to use the hatchet and life staff. And then these are the attributes you want to have. So first things first, if you start from level 0, you want to get your focus to 150. And then start building your constitution. And around level 60, you should have 300 focus and 100 constitution. And last but certainly not least, for your gear, you want to go with the medium category. And the best gear setup is to have medium helmet, heavy chest piece, light gloves, heavy pants and light boots. And this will give you a 22.9 kilogram weight. Which is exactly just below the heavy weight category. So then, moving over to the first weapon, which is the hatchet, and these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all, you want to unlock the Berserk ability with these two perks. Then afterwards, unlock the second ability called the Feral Rush and then get these two perks. Then lastly, unlock the last third ability with these two perks and that's it. Now again, from this point and onwards, you'll feel free to choose in whichever order you want to spend your points. So then, going over to the second weapon, which is the Live Staff. And these are the weapon masteries you want to have. So first of all, you want to unlock this perk and then the first ability called the Sacred Ground. And then afterwards, unlock all these five perks. Then now let's go over to the other side and unlock this one perk. And then the second ability called the beacon. And then get these two perks. Then lastly unlock the last third ability called the lights embrace. And then get these two perks as well. And now from this point you'll feel free to spin your points in whatever order you like. Okay, so now let's go over to the gameplay, where I will show you the best way to play this build. So then for the life staff, your Q ability is called the Sacred Ground, which you have to point and select the area you want to place it in, and then cast it for a split second. Then our R ability is called the Lights Embrace, and it basically works the same way, just for a single target. And lastly, we have the F ability called the Beacon, which you can just aim and it places a huge healing circle on the ground. And if you target a player, you can attach the spell to him specifically, so instead of the circle being on the ground, it will be attached to a player, making the spell very useful in expeditions and group farming. So then for our second weapon we have the hatchet, and when attacking an enemy it's super simple. You want to use your Q ability aka activate berserk mode and then keep on using auto attacks and use the R and F ability, which are just simple damage spells. The best thing about berserk mode is that it will give you self healing and movement speed, so you can use it to run away or run towards someone. So the best way to use this build in PvE is to first of all find a group of mobs and then use your life staff and auto attack 
attack each mob once to make them aggro on you. Then afterwards decide a place or a corner where all mobs can stack up on each other super close. And then place the sacred ground plus the beacon ability. But if you're fighting lower tier mobs you can use only one spell for healing as well. And then switch to the hatchet and activate berserk mode and just start attacking mobs with auto attacks plus the RNF ability. And if you do this right you can easily farm thousands of experience if you heal yourself and kill mobs fast enough in one small circle. And if for some reason you don't want to use the best way to farm weapon experience which is killing low level mobs then don't forget to use in between one or two light attacks the blocking system so you won't get one shotted by high tier mobs and that's it. So then for my last and final conclusions for this build. This hatchet and life stuff weapon combination is meant to do a bunch of damage while at the same time having the ability to survive for very long and have the ability to pull a lot of mobs and then just AOE them in few seconds. And then last but not the least for the life stuff you want to use the diamond gem. Then for your hatchet use the amber gem. And for all of your gear, amulets, rings and everything else use the enix gems. And to understand better healers and how to play them check my healer video. And there you will learn why we are using the specific gems that make the hatchet go from using strength attribute to instead focus. Which we use for the life stuff as well. So in a quick summary, if you are looking for the most broken pve build then this is the one for you. So enjoy. And that's about it. So I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, feedback or other fast leveling builds that you would like to see in the next video then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. And while you're doing that please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell so this way you could support the channel and you won't miss any more amazing content from me. With all this said you have an amazing day and I will catch you in my next video. So take it easy. Peace.